another problem <clears throat> part of the problem is it becomes a business you know because a lot of these women they will then start do you know what an only fans yeah, is yeah. yeah so they'll they'll then start an only fans and so men will subscribe to get small messages from them or you know to get individualized photos or videos from them mm -hmm. and these women make an extraordinary amount of money yeah and it's really quite shocking so they're making you know way more than they've ever made in their life doing this but yet they're in a committed relationship with man and so the man has to deal with the fact that not only is his woman out there like uh, on display but she's signaling that she's desiring better mates yeah yeah well and and um i think your point about some developmental issue uh, is relevant we do have empirical data on uh, attachment styles so um, basically, there are these, uh, they call them three different attachment styles, which is an oversimplification, but securely attached. So, you know, do you tend to trust other people? You're, you know, you feel confident in, in a stable relationship. There's uh, anxious attached, which is you're, you're always worried your partner is going to leave you or cheat on you, or maybe you have a history of partners leaving you or cheating on you. Uh, and then there's what's called um, uh, ambivalent attachment style where there are people, both men and women, who um, they don't really uh, want an intimate romantic relationship. They kind of avoid, if someone gets too close, they kind of push push them away. And in uh, studies of infidelity, the securely attached have the lowest rates of infidelity, and I guess probably the lowest rates of these Instagram posts or, um, you know, OnlyFans um, um, vocations, uh, whereas, and then the second uh, is uh, the anxious attached, but the, the, the most is, um, in terms of infidelity rate, is the avoidant attachment style. And so women with that avoidant attachment style are also likely to be high on narcissism and probably engage in that behavior. And also... Could you please explain avoidant yeah, attachment. yeah. So, so these um, are uh, people who don't like close, intimate relationships, uh, and so they they avoid them and try to be. If it gets too close, they push them away. They want to maintain their independence, and so even if they're married, they still there's this distance. There's always this pushing away um, of the other person and of intimacy psychological intimacy with that other person. Uh, and so these are, you know, women who are more likely to uh, engage in short-term mating and more likely to have affairs if they're in a long-term mateship. Now, has there been studies done on those type of people? Is, is that because those women have experienced abusive relationships in the past and they're worried about being committed to someone because that person then starts to put restrictions on them and, and you know, it gets very jealous and very mean to them. Is yeah, that yeah. It, it's a good question and we don't know. So so there is some speculation. So the, the dominant thinking, which I don't necessarily subscribe to, is that it really stems from the mother-infant attachment bond. Mm. So if you have like a, a mother or other parental figure who who wasn't there for you, who was erratic and and so you couldn't rely on them, then then the notion is that the, the infant learners they can't rely on other people, so they better do stuff by themselves that or on their sense. own. That makes sense. Uh, and the idea is that that attachment style, which some claim gets fixed in infancy, then carries over into adulthood when you form romantic relations, and so the. Um, anxious or secure or ambivalent attachment style um, in infancy gets transported into mm. an adult. That's that's the theory anyway. Uh, well, that, that completely makes sense. If your parents were never around or they weren't reliable or they were shitty to you, yeah. Yeah, yeah. the, the, the reason that I just uh, want to add a note of an asterisk by that is that yeah, there is a correlation. They do find a correlation between the infant attachment style and the later adult attachment style. But parents are also contributing genes as well as environment. And so it might be that the 
parents who themselves are kind of uh, inconsistent, not there for the kids or whatever, and are off maybe having affairs on their own or whatever, transmit genes to their children that dispose them toward those styles as well as an environment. And so studies haven't been done to try to disentangle the genetic effects versus these um, parental effects on attachment style. Interesting. Um, if you were going to study um, social media and its impact on, on dating strategies, you, you, one of the things that would be really fascinating is the amount of options. Like if you're a single person today and you have uh, an Instagram page where you're trying to present yourself as an attractive mate, you know, um, one of the weirder things today is manipulation, right? Like people are using filters yeah. and they're using these uh, deceptive tactics that change the shape of their body, change the shape of their face, the tone of their skin. I mean, it's really pretty extraordinary when you see what can be done with these filters. And so there's that, which is to signal to others that they're more attractive than they actually are physically. Then there's, you know, virtue signaling in the term, in the for form of what they write in their posts, you know, whether they're proclaiming their support for climate change or Black Lives Matter or whatever. They're trying to put themselves into a, a moral high ground position. And then there's the sexually suggestive poses that go along with that. And f hilariously enough, oftentimes you have all three of those things combined. <laughs> like they're trying to go for the coup de gras. They're, kind of, they're, they're in their underwear with their butt up in the air talking about <laughs> social issues <laughs> while they're using a filter. Yeah. And it's, I, I would imagine that, it, that just this platform whether whichever one you're talking about whether it's TikTok or Instagram or whatever these platforms are fertile breeding grounds for all sorts of pathologies narcissism sociopathy like all sorts of bizarre yeah. behavioral characteristics that are encouraged by these social media applications and the impact that it has on people like Oftentimes, like, I'll just randomly scroll through uh, my search Could, could feed. I grab some coffee? Well, yes, please. Yeah, here. Thank you. And uh, I will find some person, just a r average human being who, you know, takes photos in their underwear, and they have four million followers, which is insane. Yeah. Like, that's a lot of people. That's never been achieved before. 